Sidney Harris once wrote, People who won't help others in trouble because they got into trouble through their own fault would probably not throw a lifeline to a drowning man until they learned whether he fell in through his own fault or not. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Christian Questions. Talk radio with your breakfast with Jonathan and Rick. The objective of our program is to discuss with you, our listeners, thought-provoking and meaningful topics based on the Bible. This is a call and format. We are caller-friendly, and we certainly look forward to hearing from you. So, Jonathan, what are we talking about? Our People qu- ask that all the time. What are you guys talking about? Our question is, this morning, what does love accomplish? And our theme text is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. But now abideth faith, hope, love, these three, and the greatest of these is love. And, Jonathan, this is a a magnificent subject because it covers so much of what life is about. We've talked about faith you know, a few weeks ago, and then we talked about hope a, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And now love is, is the culmination. It's the greatest of these three. Before we get back into our subject, though, you said you had a, a few announcements here. That's right. Uh, the Christian Questions Bible Study. We have Thursday evenings from 7 to 8 p.m. And our study is at the Eastern Point Beach at the Zaberski House, and that's at the corner of Beach Pond Road and Shore Avenue. So feel free to join us on Thursday evenings from 7 to 8 o'clock. All right, very good. And uh, folks, again, we are talking about love. We are talking about, and and let's just recap for just a couple of minutes. The love that we're talking about, when you hear the word love in the world that we live in, I think our knee-jerk reaction to that word brings us down the wrong pathway. In the Bible, there are two primary words that are used for love. One is uh, the Greek word agape, which gives a sense of a selfless kind of a love, a love that gives without any worry about receiving back. It is a benevolent giving. And the other word is the word Philadelphia. That's brotherly kindness. And which is sort of a bonding together, you know, two going in the same direction, you know, on the same team, so to speak. Both of these things are very, very, very important. And in the first hour, we really went into how this agape love really in a lot of ways fits into the idea of charity because it is a giving without receiving. You know, it's a giving out of the the, the goodness of one's heart. And uh, we we talked about having that giving, that love based on something significant and solid. We talked about how Jesus himself said that God has loved me in this way. I have loved you in this way. You now should love one another in this way. This selfless giving kind of love. So we were framing that in the first hour. We ended the first hour talking about the relationship between a husband and a wife and how the uh, in, in our world, everybody, when, when they get married, one of the things they want from that marriage is to live happily ever after. Of course. I mean, I would imagine that's what you, if you, and if you don't want a happily ever after, why are you getting married? There's, <laughs> there's something really wrong with that picture. That's another program, okay? <laughs> but, you know, with the, with the happily ever after idea, in order to attain that, this, the scriptures actually give us a tremendous formula. Uh, formula for getting to the happily ever after. And it says that a wife should be subject to her husband. It's like, whoa, that's not going to go over too well today. Go try to say that on a street corner and see what happens to you. (laughs) But it also says that the husband should love his wife as Christ loved the church. Whoa. And that's a powerful, that's one powerful kind of love, brother. (laughs) It's the kind of a love that goes beyond the the, the, the friendship. It goes beyond the bonding. It is a a love that cares for you uh, and is willing to, to die for you. That's, and and that, that's the sacredness of this relationship. So we were talking about how if we could get back to framing relationships this way, uh, instead of framing them around sex, <laughs> life would be so much better. Sex is interesting, is, is dealt with in the scriptures. We read the 1 Corinthians 7, 1 to 9 at the end of the first hour. And the word love was never used in its description. And the reason is because sex is a passion. It is it is. It comes out of, or belongs coming out of love. But it is not love in and of itself. It is an expression. And the fact that we get this so backwards in the world in which we live puts us in a position where most people who get together end up apart. They won't get happily ever after because they're doing it wrong. And you can't expect to get the right result when you put the wrong ingredients in. It just doesn't work. 
So that's where we've gotten to this fa- thus far. Jonathan, let's continue a little bit along this particular line before we shift gears and look at the love of Jesus and, and how that really expresses uh, it, its, um, its fullness. Well, Rick, let's turn to Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 21. And just before you read that, and if you do have a thought, give us a call at 860-442-6102. That's 442 Put on, therefore, as God's elect, holy and beloved, a heart of compassion, kindness, loneliness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving each other. If any man have a complaint against any, even as the Lord forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts unto God. And whatsoever ye do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Give thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be in subjection to your husbands, as it is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing in the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children, that they be not discouraged. So again, Jonathan, there is a number of admonitions here along the lines of relationships, human relationships, and how love fits into these human relationships. And it gives, a, it gives an order of things. Now here's a news flash for you. There's an order given that if we follow, life will be better. It's really <laughs> simple. The instruction manual has arrived. <laughs> yes, it has. And it is readable, and it is understandable, and it does make great, great sense. And in, in this in this putting things in order, it talks about, first of all, general relationships. But it says, uh, put, uh, where does it say? And above all, these put on love, which is the bond of perfectness. And that word for love is that selfless love. So it, it's framing all of these admonitions in the context of having the selfless love for one for another. It mentions the husband-wife thing again. 